Welcome back for episode five of my building the HMS Victory. And I'm real positive on this ship, even though it was the lesser expensive model under $40. I've not had that much difficulty with it, other than as you know, I had difficulty planking. But that's an art that is learned. So I think if I built this again, I would approach the planking from a different perspective. Other than the planking, this is fit together well. I'm, I'm very happy with the, uh, the results so far. So let me give you a quick look at what I've completed since the last time we were together. Then I'll go back to the details of putting different parts together and any of the problems that I ran across and how I solved them. So let me give you a brief tour of what the ship looks like up close. I did put black walnut on the upper deck, as you can see, and I've gone ahead and put the tongue oil on it. I'm going to start putting the parts on, and unless there is a discrepancy, I'll just do it because it's uh, either letters or numbers. And the first one that has a little twist to it is part C. And it doesn't state it, you can see it, but there's really two parts. So when you go to your parts sheet, look for C1 and C2, and those get assembled together, and then they mount. One area that I caused myself a minor problem was when I flipped this page over, I was kind of working off of this. You need to pay attention to the top. There's the segment on um, C1 and 2. If I would have looked at that instead of just looked down here for part C, I would have realized sooner. Where I messed up and then had to take a piece off is 42. And there's a frame that goes under it. And what I had done is place the grate in and it recessed down and really it had the frame. So I've corrected it and it looks okay. So it raises and then there's little holes in that frame. So just make sure you check out these pre-assembled sections before you really start putting the ship together. Something very subtle and very important on this part C, these combined parts, there's a small hole right there in the tip that needs to face up. And this piece is slanted that direction it has to be in that direction because it's going to mount up to this piece and it needs to slant forward and then this will fit on there just right when all is said and done. Another thing to notice on part lowercase d is one end is angled and squared off and the other end has kind of a round, rounded edge to it right there. Here it is. You can, maybe you can see it better on the green. That end is rounded. This is squared with an angle cut into it. You can see the angle there. And the last thing that will give you an idea of where it goes is there's a cannon port right there. See that circular cutout? There's a cannon barrel that goes through that. And that is the end that goes towards the front of the ship. I was thinking that putting these parts that go on the front of the top deck would be easier to do once I had the full gun ports in place. So note to self, put the deck in place first, I glued these on first, and then I had trouble squeezing this in. And right now it's not even glued, now it's, it's very tight, it's not going to go anywhere. And I'll be able to glue it, you know, slightly, different places. But I should have put this in place first, then put this on. 
and it does, it lines up with this. That makes all the gun ports just in the right place. And then I did a little bend right here to match up to the front of that deck. It has a slight curve to it. Now I can put the pieces on the front and be confident they're in the right position. Another quick hint, when you put these pieces on, don't glue this up here. I mean, you, you do glue it behind this, but this top part, when you put this very top deck in place, you're going to want to be able to squeeze that in so that it's underneath this. And see, I can squeeze that in slightly. The important part is back here. You want to be able to squeeze these in so they're underneath this. I obviously painted this front piece and I mounted it flush with this top edge. So there actually is a little gap on the floor, which that's fine with me. And this piece, after struggling so much, there are hints visual, but I didn't notice them. That little curved piece on the back kind of matches a little curved piece on this top rail. So I guess that was a hint I should have paid attention to. There's that one in place. And at first I mounted this flush with the bottom of this uh, rail, these rail posts. But in reality, I had to take it apart. I put the rail posts on first and then it rests on the top and you can see it catches just the top edge of that and it also rests on the top of this piece there, as well as that. Here are these two anchor support arms in place. And I did rest them slightly on top of this. I don't know that I needed to. I could have backed them up just a little bit. You can see the paintwork that I did on this piece. I've also put into place this grate and it. I did a little bit of extra sanding to fit the nose of the ship a little bit better. And then I put one little drop of super glue on the tip of that and centered it on that piece. I'm not putting this piece in place yet because I'm not sure exactly where it'll go. This is not the size of uh, rod that will go in there, but I think it guides the angle. So I'm just gonna wait a little bit and research this a little more before I put this piece in. Another challenge on this type model is these windows for the cannons, the cannon ports, have a very small frame and it also has a door that comes with it and they are incredibly fragile. They come on panel number seven. I've got the top row out. Basically the best thing you can do is put in a brand new blade and these come in incredibly helpful. The really fragile edge, the one that's hard to get it out, is the outside edge. So I'll start over on this side. And what I do is I just gently, it's like I'm going through layers. Put in a brand new blade, find the center line that divides each one of these and there's a tab right in the center of it and once you find that hold both ends of it and rock the blade forward and it pops it off pretty successfully so that entire section was a success without breaking any and you can tell one side looks kind of flat and you can't see the tab, that's the back side. So you want to work from the front side. I'm about to put on the last part of part H. It's really a combination of H1 and H2. And it makes this railing right here. The instructions have you assemble this before putting it on. I went ahead and put this the main beam on first because there's a hole on each end that it goes into and I didn't think I could get these to the right height. So try either way that you want. It is pretty tedious work. That's why I'm not showing the entire thing. I'm just showing me putting on the last piece. And what, whoops, what I've been doing is putting the drop or two of super glue at the base and part 
way up the stem, if that makes sense. And then grabbing with a pair of tweezers. This is one of those pieces that it's very important you sand off that nub. And the nub part that I sanded off is what I'm putting up against this little rail. And I kind of set it down and then slide it into place as best I can. I've come to the place where I'm going to try and put these things on the back of the ship, the decorative panels. And there's a part number 52. It's pretty small. And I've gone ahead and stained them. And they actually match this little wing tip there. So these will glue right there, and I think it's just to give additional support. So I'll get those glued in place, and then these pieces will go in a position like that. I don't know if they're, they'll be able to bend. I don't think, no. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see on camera. But this back piece that came with the ship has a little bit of a bow to it. It's very subtle and this up here kind of looks like it does too. So because I had put some planking here I've etched that out a little bit so this will fit down in there because it does curve and this has a curve built in into it also. So when you rest it in there and push so it slightly bends, you can't even see the bend, it does fit in there nicely. Up here, I need to sand off. I'm off just a little bit because I want that to also match this piece, which has a very similar curve or the same curve as that piece. So let me get my sander down and, and get rid of those little, just slight amount of overlap on some of those pieces. Now I have that just the same all the way across. You probably saw me using the back side of this sander. That comes in very handy. It's not designed that way. And this actual piece of sandpaper was fine grit, plus it's almost completely worn out. So it was just barely taking anything off. Well, here I have it in place. And actually this side went to the interior and the back went over the top. So from the back, there's no gap. And actually, you really can't see one here either. So I'm pretty happy with that. Um, this did match up properly with that piece that I put in. And then I had to gently push this down so it has a little bit of a curvature to it. But be very careful because it's very fragile. That's it for episode five but I want to make a special announcement in episode six. So stay tuned for that. It's some exciting news for me. I hope you'll be just about as excited as I am. So look for that new special announcement in the next episode. As always, thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.